like to say thank you very much for, for joining us, Anna. It's great to have you here. Um, basically, we came across your work and, and we just had a few questions. And, and that's why we were kind of asking uh, and hoping that you'd be able to, to kind of come and join us and, and talk about your work. Um, and actually, by the way, it was great to see you last week in the um, International Symposium as well. So it was great to connect there too. So um, if it's OK, I'm just going to hand over to you, Anne. Um, please feel free to, to, to use the space in any way, um, mm -hmm. just for the sort of 10, 15 minutes, however long you would like to talk about your, your work. Thank you. Yeah, OK, thank you. I'm very happy to be here and very impressed by your pronunciation of my name. <laughs> Normally, people uh, call me Anne or Anna, but it's Anne. So yeah, that's very well pronounced. Um, yes, and I'm sorry, I have to leave uh, before one hour, but it's election here, day here today and I didn't manage to go uh, in the morning and uh, I have an appointment later. So yeah, just uh, managing uh, schedules, you know. Uh, so uh, talking about my... Uh, the, the paper I did was uh, quite uh, interesting for me to read it because it's uh, it's been a while since since I wrote it and it's uh, one of the first things uh, articles I wrote I think about uh, poetic inquiry so um, a lot of things that has happened since then uh, I'm still struggling in my uh, academic work in my research to find time to work with poetic inquiry but I'm sure you all um, have the same uh, what to call it, the same uh, I'm just trying to uh, share yeah you all you probably is all struggling to, uh, to to find time as well to do uh, poetic inquiry um, so but I will try and talk about my uh, let's see. So, do you see it now, my presentation? Yes, we can see it. Thank you very much. Yes. Great. It's, uh, I always uh, do presentations in uh, the program called Prezi. I hope that's uh, fine with you. This is a bit, um, I don't know, experimental. I don't know why I chose this background, but I did. Okay, so I'm, I'm trying to focus just on the, the, the paper called Poetic Inquiry, Understanding Youth on the Margins of Education. And I, um, I wrote my PhD in uh, around, well, I f it was finished in 2016, and roughly the same time as this uh, paper went through. And uh, uh, so my research area is uh, young people and the margins of edu the educational system. So it's a young group called uh, Young Meat. Um, young people struggling in the educational system. And there has been quite a lot of research actually done on uh, the specific uh, group of young people. So, uh, so in my PhD, I had uh, I wanted to experiment and I wanted to explore other ways of understanding the situation of uh, these young people and and also trying to explore the the use of, of poetic inquiry, what does it actually add to, um, to sort of more traditional qualitative research and the perspectives that you might uh, find or the findings that come up, the, the analysis you make with more traditional qualitative methods compared to, uh, to using poetic inquiry. So I started off uh, looking into uh, looking into this oh, okay here we go um trying to explore uh, also the young people's processes of becoming so uh, uh, that's a term from more sort of uh, social constructionist thinking uh, looking at uh, processes of becoming and, and exploring how does the young people who struggle uh, uh, in the educational system, how does that struggle also interfere in their processes of becoming and in their way that they perceive themselves and perceive others and perceive um, society? So I wanted to understand also how 
societal conditions so co-constitute uh, the young people's processes of becoming. So it's a, like a also a, a mix of uh, of a sort of social uh, psychological view on the young people combined with a more uh, sociologist view. So it's like I wanted to have a focus not just on the young people's experiences. Um, sort of phenomenologically, but also how the societal conditions form these, um, the young people's processes. Also, we ha I had uh, a, a focus on, it was evident when I did my um, uh, sort of research uh, review or the, the literature review, that there was a lot of focus from 2010 and onwards uh, in in understanding these young people on what works. So we want to find out what works, you know, when they are struggling the educational system, um, the Ministry of Education or other, uh, other uh, institutions will try and make projects uh, helping the, the young people, um, uh, helping them in the processes of, of, uh, of entering ordinary education and, and completing, of course, also. So I wanted to know what works. And, uh, and since I also had uh, an interest in, uh, in exploring this um, in my PhD and in an evaluation that we make for the, made for the Ministry of Education, then I wanted in my PhD and in and as I said before, exper ex experiments with poetic inquiry. I also wanted to uh, to explore, you know, what does it what does it do? You know, the, entering the the projects. What does it do for the young people? Not what works. I, in a sense, uh, in that part of my work, I wasn't interested in what what works or not. I was interested in the young people and the processes of becoming and how they understand themselves and other people and and society and so forth. So um, it's based on interviews with um, 20 uh, research participants, young people between 15 and 19 years old, uh, with no education, no jobs, and in various projects uh, trying to help them uh, uh, sort of getting closer to uh, education. <clears throat> yeah, so... Uh, so I just started uh, experimenting with my uh, research transcripts or the interview transcripts and trying to, you know, first of all, I just said, okay, what, what does this, you know, how can I work with this? I had no clue. I just uh, started, started doing it, you know, started to saying, okay, how, started erasing, basically. Just started erasing words, uh, my own, my questions, uh, and then, then slowly, it sort of transformed into something um, that I do not think is uh, poetry. It's not, uh, it doesn't have a lyrical quality. And in my uh, later uh, work with Poetic Inquiry, I call it poetic analysis or I call it uh, poetic texts. In Danish, I call it uh, poetisering, which is like poetization. <laughs> It doesn't, it's a bit difficult to pronounce, but, but in order to create a distance from, uh, from uh, the art of, uh, of poetry, you know, I, I don't want to be uh, considered a poet or I want to be poet. I want to use poetic inquiry as an analytical tool, trying to understand better the, the research subject and the, the young people that I study. And so this is actually not in the paper. So I've taken the liberty to uh, spice it up a bit because then of what I did after I wrote the article, I actually then I experimented trying to say, okay, can I actually, um, can I uh, make a poetic representation or a poetic analysis of each of these 20 young individuals uh, focusing on uh, each verse is one year. So I'll read this aloud. I am 17, a trolley boy, nice and quiet, mostly on my own, fetching trolleys, placing trolleys at the checkout, fetching trolleys. 
I am 18, special education, just a little Danish and maths. Just have to get through, no one to talk to. School is a kind of, maybe not holiday, an easy way to get up in the morning. I am 19, work with grocery, fetching things, putting things in place, throwing things out, sweeping the floor, watching the floor, fetching things. When you're busy, you hardly notice time. Suddenly it's late. I have no dream. Can always work here, fetching things, putting things in place, throwing things out. I don't hate it. So what I wanted in this uh, analysis was to yeah, focus on each year and trying to condensate the experience of this young person. And as I said, the, the, what, what are the conditions here? The conditions is that he has been in special education system. He is sort of stuck in, in a grocery store. One year he does, uh, he's in the bottle room and then the next year he's in the uh, putting things on shelves and sweeping the floors. That's when, when I talk to him, he actually tells me that he really likes uh, uh, cinema and films and he would love to work in a, in a cinema, but no one has, uh, has uh, sort of uh, helped him finding that direction. Instead, he's stuck in, in, the, in a supermarket. And this is quite typical of these initiatives trying to, to help these young people. They help them by offering them what's at hand, what's easy uh, for the system. You know, so the supermarkets are open, you know, they need people to, to be sorting the bottles and putting things on shelves. And they, they actually, and also they think that that's a help for this person. But, but as I'm trying to show here, um, there's a lot of repetition. There's a lot of feeling of being stuck. Um, I'll show you in the end. I've actually worked uh, further on this one and uh, I think gotten closer to showing that sort of stuckness. But um, so in the paper also, I was trying to, I think I'm running. Yeah, no, that's fine. Um, I'm, I also tried to, because I just started uh, uh, exploring poetic inquiry and I, I couldn't find uh, I couldn't find any text or any books uh, sort of explaining in sort of uh, what does it actually do what does it what does poetic inquiry do you know how does it what does it add to the research um, so I did my own little uh, literature review and it wasn't systematic or anything I just wanted to to explore in a number of of articles, what, what, what did I, what, what, how, how did I understand what you could actually do with uh, poetic inquiry? So one of the things was that it broadens understandings. It it uh, gives uh, often the the participants, research participants, view on on uh, a specific uh, subject that you don't normally hear. You don't normally hear the voices like that. Um, and secondly, uh, it gave, it adds an effective response to whatever uh, situation the research participants are in. Um, and then the last thing I found uh, present in a lot of the, in the articles that I read was uh, that it has like a, a representation of essence of experience. So more like a phenomenological uh, approach and, you know, how does this person experience uh, the world, you know, what does the world look like from this person's perspective? Um, so that's sort of like the, the sort of three things that I identified as, as a sort of the argument of what does poetic inquiry actually do? Yeah. So another one of my um, poetic analysis where I am much more focused on on analyzing also the, the 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 societal and cultural conditions of, uh, of of which this person this young person is is part and how it affects um, her view on herself and also there is uh, I wanted also to see if I could work with uh, the the term individual uh, individualization so how does how does a person in real life person actually experience individualization? 
Um, yeah, so I call it trying. I'm 17. I am not, cannot, am not, never, never, shut off. School, homework, sleep, school, homework, sleep. What right? What is it exactly I have to do? Have to. Have to is not freedom. I am now 18. I am a loser, a gutter, a diagnosis, and blah, blah, blah. Given up. Have to. Trying. Not so serious. Trying. Let go a little. Be here. I have to try. I am now 19. I am collapsed, run down, stressed, pressed. Cannot live in this world. Not live. I am the one making mistakes. Me doing it all wrong. If I cannot figure out how to be different, it's my own fault. Doesn't fit into this world. It's my problem. Not worthy. Trying to be free. So in again, I worked with uh, it's it's uh, interviews, uh, three interviews uh, over the course of three years. So one interview each year, and then working with the transcript to to co and condense this sense of uh, you know what is this? What, how does this? What what does it come across when I interview this young person? What does she struggle with? Um, and also in this. Um, trying to to weave in the the structural conditions of which she is struggling, um, and and as I said, the the issue of of individualization. How does it feel that it's her responsibility that she's not able to um, to complete uh, ordinary education? Yeah, and so I end in this uh, in this article saying that uh, what I find is. Uh, is uh, the strength also of poetic inquiry is that it evokes emotion that um, and I've taken that further in uh, in other articles as well also in, in Danish articles exploring it for myself you know exploring uh, affect and emotion and the role of, of affect in in uh, research uh, in humanistic and social science research uh, researching, for instance, young people, you know, we have a tendency to not wanting to consider affect or emotion part of, of research, like we have focus on what works or whatever. And as soon as there is a, uh, emotion involved in the interview or whatever, we have attended, have had a tendency to sort of neglect that and to, uh, to uh, not consider it part of the, uh, of the analysis. And I, want to include affect and emotion in the analysis um, because as we all know of course it's part of life and it, it has a strong effect on uh, what we do how we perceive ourselves what's going on and now today we see a huge uh, increase in uh, in mental health um, challenges among young people and I think that some of it is is also uh, extremely effective and also, uh, the poetic inquiry shows the polyvocality of experience. So I wanted to also show how there are multiple voices in the poetic analysis. So there is obviously the research particip participant's voice, which is only their voice. But as I use uh, literary tools to, uh, to analyze, I also uh, and use, for instance, repetition. It's also my voice. And then, of course, I wanted to show the um, the theoretical uh, theoretical voice, my theor theoretical background, and my view in that. And uh, of course, there's the sociological voice, or if you want, like the focus on structural conditions and how that also um, interferes with the young person's uh, experiences and and their conditions, their uh, opportunities and lack of opportunities, etc. So I think that was that. And, but then I wanted to, to show that uh, since I wrote this article, I've worked in various ways to, to keep working with poetic inquiry. And I've also um, done some work with uh, visual poetry or uh, pattern poetry, I think you call pattern poems. Yeah. Um, and the, the one, the first one uh, with the boys sweeping floors, it's the top one. 
exterior things, fetching things, putting things on shelves. I am a fetcher, fetching things, putting things on shelves. So when I was working with this, I wanted to enhance this repetition and this feeling of being uh, being stuck in this uh, in this uh, uh, sweeping the floor. What's it doing? Um, doing things that uh, are repetition in itself but also feels like a repetition of his uh, in his life I guess um, yeah so I'm not going to explain more about the passion poems just to say that that's also an opportunity and that's something that I find really interesting because because one of it, because it made me realize that one of the things that poetic inquiry is uh, is really uh, really adds to the research process is that it slows things down. You know, when you do these pattern poems, you know, everything has to fit in a certain way. You want to in order for the visual um, to 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 be exactly what you want it to be. And and so you have to you really consider you really uh, yeah, you sense the the words of the research uh, in a in a slow in a in a completely different way. And I think it adds uh, an extra layer in the research process, but obviously also in the representation of the um, poetic uh, analysis. Yeah. So I think that was what I had to say now. I'll stop sharing and then we can- Thank you uh, very much. Thank talk. you very much, Anna. It's great to, it's great to have heard you.